Here's a list. I can try to find the plywood from somewhere if there's none in the art room. I can try to find the plywood from somewhere. Jesus. I think I got that right. I don't know. She offers me the note she's holding. I take it, hesitating a bit. I'd said I'd help you, but this has no implication on whether I'm joining a council or not. Aww. Still, thanks, Heechon. Try to be quick. We are in a stall building streak now. We must hurry, hurry, hurry. She bounces out of the classroom, leaving me and the teacher looking at each other with something that feels like a silent agreement. Well, there you have it, Nakai. You have something to do now. Please don't sound so smug. Looking at the list with a number of items ranging from paint to plywood, all written with small, neat handwriting that is undoubtedly Chizune's, I heave a sigh. I'll be going then. Leaving the long list when play at the teacher, I exit to the hallway. The classrooms closest to ours are designated belonging to the classes 3-1 and 3-1 and 3-2 on the right side and 3-4 on the left side. Each door looking exactly the same. There's 3-3. Further down the corridor, still with identical doors, are rooms that I didn't think were used for classes. I guess the art room is not a classroom as such. I carefully push open the furthest door and peek in. It's a classroom, but it seems rather badly kept or not in use. Am I in the right place? Desks and chairs are all around the room. A thin layer of dust settled on them. There are some easels in the corner, so at least this looks like the right place. The room is flushed in sunlight from the big windows. Shadows creeping all over the desks. Specks of dust are dancing in the stagnant air, making the beams of light almost visible. This kind of reminds me of my old art room, like we had the tables like that. They're without drawers under them, they're just the flat top tables like that. Jokingly, I call into the empty room. Anybody ho? Something catches my eye and I stop mid-sentence. Oh. Sitting on the desk is a short-haired girl, curiously wearing a boy's uniform with a fork between her toes, a morsel of food stuck firmly on the end. So she doesn't have arms. Well, obviously. A private lunch and the song is parody. Uh, that'd be awkward to interrupt. The... This odd way of dining seems to be caused by her apparent lack of hands, but her presence here is what takes me aback even more. How did I miss her before if she's sitting in the corner very still, but I still somehow took her as a part of the furnishing or a statue at first glance? I'm not being too observant today, as a whole. The girl seems to be frozen in place, staring at me with her huge eyes like a rabbit in a headlight. She's staring at me, her mouth wide open, ready to accept the fork. I'm staring at her, I'm not wide open, suddenly remembering I didn't finish my sentence and trying to think if I should. This weird stand like keeps us both stunned in the silence punctuated only by the wall clock ticking rhythmically. Hello. The girl stuffs a fork hole in her mouth and is now staring at me expectantly while chewing. This is a bit awkward. Um, hello. I'll still be pick up some, pli some supplies from here. For some festival stalls, I think. I didn't think there would be someone here. There isn't. That's why I came here too. She picks up another fork full. Doesn't that mean you're here, then? She raises her eyebrows as she suspects my observation was false. Why does she have a male uniform anyway? You were pretty observant. I guess it does. But who are you? The girl is Oh, is it maybe because of the eating with her feet thing? Because you wouldn't want to have a skirt on and lifting your legs like that, I guess? I don't know. This girl is pretty straightforward, isn't she? I'm Nakai, Hassan Nakai. I just transferred in on Monday. I'm Rin. Tezuka Rin. Rin Tezuka. I won't shake hands with you, but at least we know who we are now. Yeah, I don't think you can shake hands with me. That's very nice. Her deadpan manner of talking makes it hard to determine whether she's joking about shaking hands or not. It kind of bothers me. Joking about these matters doesn't feel, doesn't feel appropriate at all. While I'm trying to figure out what's appropriate and whether this girl is, she seems to have lost interest in me and is now gazing yearningly back at her food. Can I continue my lunch? If you don't mind me, I won't mind you. If you need to get your stuff, the supplies are at the back. Go right ahead, but lunch? School's already over for the day. What word would you use then? There's no word for a meal you eat after lunch but before a dinner, right? It bothers me very much too, but I don't really know what I should say. I don't think you were supposed to eat a meal between lunch and dinner to begin with. But I'm hungry now, my delicious box of lunch would go to waste otherwise. I have curry. It's very delicious. 
With much decisiveness, Random once again picks up the fork between her toes and with at least as much impoliteness, she points it straight at me. So, Nakai, what brings you to this place? Like I said, I was told to look for these things. No, the school. From outside, you look fine. Is your problem inside? I come to the full stop, opening my mouth and not getting a word out. I... I can guess. I'm good at guessing. Better than most people. Rin cuts me off before I can answer her question. We're skirted around it somehow. I don't know which I would have done. I froze in front of this issue again. I haven't even told anyone here about my condition. Or maybe it's only because it hasn't really come up. I do get the feeling that I'm not making issues of this part of the social code here, as the teacher said. I wonder if the people here could relate. Probably not any better than any normal person could. I can't relate to Shizune's circumstances, or Lily's either. Naturally, while I go through this in my head, Rin keeps considering what my condition could be with an overtly uh, contemplative look on her face. Excuse me. She puts her fork between her lips and leans back, looking at the ceiling as if the answer was written. <laughs> Sorry, excuse me again. Looking at the ceiling as if the answer was written up there. She puts her fork between her lips and leans back, looking at the ceiling as if the answer was written up there. A beam of light illuminates her face from the window side, creating a mask of dark shadow on the other side. I don't think it's anything in your head, and something in your guts would be boringly ordinary, like this lunch of mine, and less delicious. The problem must be in your pants. Uh, the wrong way. The mess up Sherlock Holmes kind of statement, the sheer lack of tact it was low of catching me completely off guard. I think I might have reeled back, even physically, as for inside one revelation. Revelation and astonishment. <laughs> so I was right, there's something wrong with your tackle, isn't there? Uh, I don't think so. Still partially shocked, but recognizing the need to reply something, I spit out the first thing that I can think of. No, nothing like that. I have a heart problem. Arrhythmia. I think that was where it beats too fast, didn't it? I said it, more like blurted it out, but I said it. The girl in front of me pursed her lips together and glow, glow, glowers at me, looking very disappointed. I don't know how to pronounce that. One way to find out. Do, 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 do. It means have an angry soul and look on one's face or a scowl. Glower. Glowers. Okay. The girl in front of me puts her lips together and glowers at me, looking very disappointed. How boring. Trouble in the pants would have been much more scandalous. Why would I be here for that, though? What's with this reaction? I'm sorry to let you down. I forgive you. Just, I collect people and a person with, you know, that kind of problem would have been really great. Collect people? People with different problems. Huh, so you just, like, go around asking people what's wrong with them? Pretty much. I see. So she like the opposite of the legless girl, because she's the armless girl. With little left to say, Rin resumes her lunch and the conversation dies away. But I keep thinking about what was said. It's the first time I told anyone else about my condition. All the other people have either known about it already, or heard about it from someone else. Or didn't need to know about it, like every other student here, so far. Should I have told it as a natural part of introductions? Is it expected of me? Hi, I'm Sal. I have a very serious heart condition. I mean, I get it. Is that how I'm supposed to go around introducing myself from now on? As if our disabilities would define us. What a, disgust what a disgusting thought. Or maybe the Tezuka girl just has an unnatural interest in such things. As I walk to the back of the room to pick up the items on Misha's list, a chance I to study Rin from the corner of my eye. Her hair is a burnt auburn, almost orange, and cropped short. Long hair would probably be impossible with no arms. The boy's uniform and the lack of arms makes her look very thin, almost scrawny. She is not particularly pretty except for her murky green eyes which flicker restlessly from below her short blank. Her, sh her blangs, her short bangs, even when she eats. The distance and the shadows make it seem like they don't reflect sunlight at all, but instead absorb all of it within the deep well. Well, inside of them, like, deep well. I'm having a stroke. I had to go back and look at that. Raindrops and puddles and a private lunch. Uh, she 
the distance and the shadows make it seem like they don't reflect sunlight at all, but instead absorb all of it within them like deep wells. Jesus, thank God my stroke was over. And I didn't even read that. I'm screwing up a lot here today. Sorry. How she moves her feet, as definitely as a normal person would use their arms. Okay. However, I can see how this sight would, could discomfort people, especially while eating. It makes me feel a bit uncomfortable, at least. I hesitate to think about the word unnatural, but it's too late now, isn't it? I keep searching the cabs and shelves for Misha's things, but after enough time passes, the silence grows too uncomfortable, so I try to force some conversation out of this strange girl. So, do you always eat alone this late, or do you get the occasional vi visitor? I must have Victor. Visitors, maybe you were my first occasional visitor, but I don't always eat alone either. Sometimes I eat with a certain person on the roof. If she's not horsing around, is this a legless girl? Horsing? She likes to be sports. Yeah, that's probably her. Oh. Uh, what was her name? A Amy? No, I can't remember already. And that's all I can think of to say. Both of us all silently as Bryn forced the last bits of her meal to her mouth. I look down at my hall and double check it with Misha's list. It seems I have everything except plywood. Um, so, I think I have all the things now. That's very nice for you. Don't feel obliged to stay. I was about to take a nap anyway. You need to do whatever you're going to do with that stuff anyway, right? Or perhaps you like to watch girls sleeping? <laughs> eh, I'm not sure what to make of this, but Rin looks serious. Even if I did, I think I have to be going. I, I'll catch you around, Tezuka. You can call me Rin. This is Rin her first name. I feel that our relationship is at this point good enough to warrant, warrant this much. I was already trying to make my exit, but she draws me back in. Fine. Then I'm Hasao. Then you are. Okay, so Hasao is his first name. Rin looks at me hard in the eyes, but that intimidating feeling you get when someone stares at you isn't there. It's like she's actually not looking at me at all. She blinks a couple of times and I can't figure out why a pause like this just popped between us out of nowhere. See you later, Hassel. There is something like a tiny smile there in her face. Maybe. I quietly back out of the room as I shut the door in front of my face. I whisper to myself, what an intriguing person. From inside, I hear a muffled sing-song voice. I heard that... Oh, what did she hear? I jump at the sudden uh, appearance of Misha, who I had not heard approaching despite the completely empty hallway. Somehow she had gotten the jumping distance of me without making a sound. Creepy. It briefly reminds me of Kenji's nutty theory about a global feminist conspiracy, but push that thought aside. This is where the heart attack happens? Shizune, standing slightly behind Misha, looks aloof as she couldn't have heard the remark that drew Misha's attention, but Misha is visibly excited. No, wait, more importantly, who is in there? There's no club meetings today. She tries to curiously peek past me, even though the door prevents her from seeing anyway. What are you doing here? You took so long that we had to come check what's wrong. That's no good, he chan She wags her finger at me scoldingly. I found plywood, but everything else is still missing because you were tardy. Oh, sorry, er, I got the things here. We're just going to bring them. I think you were up to some mischief, Hee-chan. Who was in there with you, I wonder? Misha signed something quickly to Shizune, pointing at her own ear a couple of times. Shizune immediately pushes her way past me and opens the door into the classroom I just left. I can only imagine the shock she's experiencing. With Shizune's diligent attitude, the insolence of daring to deface school property by sleeping on top of it must be too much to bear. And indeed, she stares at Rin, frozen in place apart from the slight but noticeable trembling of her shoulders from suppressed rage, I'm sure. Instead of blowing up, she then just takes a few deep breaths, adjusts her glasses, and slams the door shut, turning the sign furiously at Misha. Maybe she did blow up, but I can't understand it. She shoots a very low stare at me, too, as if it was somehow my fault that Rin is sleeping on one of the tables. I hope she's not getting any funny ideas about the reason of my tardiness. Hello. Rin's voice comes from the other side of the door and it takes a few eye blinks to realize she might have trouble opening it. I open the door to find Rin directly behind it, looking at us with a half-interested, half-sleepy face. Hello. Miss Tezuka, 
What do you think you were doing? You absolutely are not permitted to use school property for such a er, disgraceful activity. It sure is suddenly very crowded in here. I didn't know I was this popular. Huh, that's an interesting way to look at it, I suppose.